Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at uh, ham radio and uh, the licensing that's required to use ham radios uh, within the UK and around the world. CB radio transmits on 26 to 27 megahertz for uh, known as the 11 meter band and um, 446 PMR is on UHF a 70 centimeter band. You do not require a license in most places to to use radios on these frequencies but anything else ham radio um, you require a license from your regulator uh, in the UK that's Ofcom. You do not need a license in order to receive information on a radio. You can have a scanner, uh, ICR30 for example, fabulous scanner. You do not need a license to use one of those because they can't transmit. If you transmit on any frequency outside of the license free frequencies, you require a license. So to get your call sign, which you need, um, you have to pass your foundation exam. Uh, and that is not, it's not difficult, but it's not easy. So you have to have a good understanding of the um, subject matter um, in order to be able to pass the exam. It is a 26 question multiple choice um, and the pass rate is, is 19 or more correct to pass. Now I can see that there's a big um, movement in prepping, preppers, uh, especially in the United States. Um, I'm not, not a prepper myself. Um, but uh, I can see that communication uh, in the event of uh, a disaster, Armageddon, whatever you want to call it, um, will be extremely difficult and challenging and radio uh, is likely to be the method of communication. So this video is meant to be informative uh, and to encourage you to take the next step to do your um, foundation license which is the first rung. There's three different license categories, but we'll come back to that. So why bother taking your test if you're a prepper? When, our, our, when Armageddon happens, all the hungry Ofcom secret agents will be out looking for your pot noodle stash uh, and will not be caring about who does and doesn't have a license. However, ham radio is complicated. Um, there's many different terms and acronyms you need to learn how to use the equipment, tune antennas, what frequencies to use, etc. Um, you will be far too busy surviving in an Armageddon situation and protecting your pot noodle stash to start learning about ham radio from a book. So I would encourage you to learn the basics now uh, rather than going out and just buying some equipment and stashing it away to use, uh, you know, if the worst happens. If you're hunkered down in a bunker, I think digital radio is less likely to be working or reliable. Uh, repeaters will be offline due to power outages. Um, there will be no one to maintain and service the equipment. Towers on top of hills, depending on the type of disaster, will more likely be destroyed. Uh, so, I, I think high HF, high frequency, um, that type of radio transmission is is the most most likely to be useful. The expected range for radios really depends on the equipment used, uh, the power output, wattage the antenna used, um, the tuning of the antenna, etc. Uh, always remember that height is might. Um, a four watt output radio on HF, UHF, VHF, on a flat terrain, four to six miles, suburban, two to four miles, uh, urban, one to three miles tops. It, it really depends. Um, DXing is a term you may hear. Um, it's a way of receiving and sending distant or long radio, long distance radio signals. Um, most common is on the HF bands, 10, 11, 12 meter. Um, very dependent on the time of year uh, and the time of day. Um, signals are being transmitted up, bouncing off the ionosphere, 
signals go up 40 50 miles and then bounce back down uh, they can travel extraordinary distances 9,000 miles it really depends um, but that is very uh, very environment specific there's also CW which is continuous wave uh, Morse code to uh, any normal human being uh, you need well, there is special equipment out there, especially in the prepping circle. There is special equipment that you can buy, which is like a little mini computer almost, which sends and receives Morse code for you. You don't need to sit there tapping away or anything silly like that. It will effectively allow you to communicate on um, continuous wave with other people just by, by typing, which is, uh, which is excellent. So you can look that up. So ham radio is vast. There are many areas to investigate, find the one that interests you the most uh, and then specialise in that area and, and branch out. There's an awful lot of computing now um, in amateur radio. You can, you can have little radio um, units that you can connect up to your computer and you can have a waterfall on your computer and scan the bands etc. It's, uh, it's, it's a wide, a wide um, field. So going back to the exams. In the UK, we have uh, the entry level, which is foundation. I think they call that technician in the States. We have an intermediate license is the next one. And then you have your full license. So depending on how much you learn, depends on the power you can run, um, wattage restrictions apply in the different categories. Foundation, maximum 10 watts. Uh, 50 watts for intermediate and 400 watts uh, on full. Uh, you need to learn the syllabus for each of these license categories. For example, if you were to grab an antenna that's transmitting 400 watts, you are going to get burnt. So, you know, you need to uh, all these license categories and the material that's there is to teach you to um, not cause interference and to uh, not uh, harm you or others. So going back to myself, uh, my prior knowledge, um, I've used CB radios in the 80s and 90s. Um, yes, I know I don't look that old, but I am. Um, basic understanding of electrical circuits and auto electrics, and that, that's about it really, that's, that's all I knew. Now my timeline, um, and I'm just going over this to give you an idea of um, you know, how quickly you can do your foundation license. Uh, it took me 16 days from start to finish. Um, I watched some YouTube videos on the 2nd of October 2021 um, and thought, hey, this sounds interesting, uh, quite a varied um, hobby, and I'd like, to, I'd like to learn a bit more. So I ordered the foundation book, uh, which is this, the foundation license book in the UK. Um, I, I ordered that uh, on the 3rd of October. Uh, I watched some more YouTube videos uh, and somebody said in a YouTube video, just book your exam. It's £28 or £27.50 or something. Just book it. So I did. And they said it would give you something to work to. So I went online, um, RSGB's website, and I booked the exam. And the next available date, uh, I think, was the... So I booked it on the 6th of October and it was the 17th of October. Now, unfortunately, my book did not arrive until the afternoon of the 12th of October. Um, but hey, there we are. Um, so I completed my first read through of the book on the 16th of October. Uh, and then I had my exam the next day um, and I passed. So, you know, that was uh, that was good. But I did do a lot of YouTube watching in the evenings uh, after work, sort of an hour or hour and a half before bed to wind down. I was watching YouTube videos. Um, so anyway, we'll look at the materials that I used. Um, YouTube, fabulous resource. There's somebody in the UK called DX Commander. Uh, his videos were excellent, really good. Um, they really helped me a lot. Um, he had a whole series on, on the foundation what you need to know and explained all sorts of things very very useful so look him up uh, the book when it finally arrived that was useful um, there's an app you can get on ios i don't know if it's available on android um, it's uk amateur radio mock i think it was called 
um, and that was really good as well. You could pick 10 questions in 10 minutes or 26 questions in 45 minutes um, and it just takes you through the syllabus or the questions from the syllabus and asks you all of these questions as the exam would uh, and that was really useful for, for practicing. Um, there is also lots of content on the RSGB's website, so that's the Radio Society of Great Britain. Um, they've got mock exam papers, um, etc. on their site. Plenty of information and well worth a read. So the exam process itself, uh, a few days before the meeting, uh, before the exam, you have a meeting with the examiner um, who explains the process to you, what's involved, what to expect, you then have a 10 minute video meeting before the exam starts. The invigilator will request you to scan your room with your webcam so that they can see uh, everything in the room to make sure that you, you know, you're not cheating, you haven't got uh, flip charts up with all of the uh, course material on it. Um, you get some reference information. Um, which you download from their website and it has uh, some band plans and and some some different bits frequencies and stuff so you're not expected to remember all of these things but you you need to know how to look it up and, and where to find the information uh, so you hold those up to make sure that you haven't written on those prior to the exam um, and once the exam starts you can use a calculator uh, and a pen and you can write on your paper and material uh, once the exam has uh, has started you get one hour the invigilator watches you on the camera and can hear you while you're taking the exam um, I on one question got a bit stuck and was reading it out loud as I'd read it a couple of times in my head and the uh, uh, and uh, the inv invigilator at the end um, pulled me up on that and said which one did you go for in the end uh, the answer was this one and uh, yes I got that one wrong if you leave your desk uh, to go to the toilet during the exam uh, that is allowed but any questions that you have answered up to the point that you go to the toilet will be you can't return to them um, for obvious reasons once you have finished the exam and you submit it, you immediately see the uh, result of the exam as to whether you've passed or failed. You can't go back and see which exact questions you got right or wrong, but you can look at the section of the syllabus at which you, you, know, you, you got right or, or wrong. What to do once you've passed your exam? Join the RSGB. If you're in the UK or your local equivalent, uh, you must support the society you're in the club now so just join it it's approximately 50 pound a year and worth every penny plus you get a fridge magnet a pen and a badge uh, when you join the uh, rsgb you get sent this um, folder uh, inside the folder apart from the goodies that i've already mentioned um, you get your certificate for joining the society uh, but you also get this magazine it's called radcom and it's excellent it's really good uh, it's absolutely packed full of information um, all about radio and lots of adverts and other bits and pieces in here and it is really a, it's a fascinating read definitely encourage you to uh, to to get this uh, and I also saw this that arrived with something uh, can't quite remember but ready radio today um, which again is uh, rsgb logo on that at the bottom uh, so i'll be uh, having a having a good read through that when i when i have the time um, it takes about a week to get your certificate and why is that important well you need your candidate number from the certificate before you can register for your license you go to the Ofcom website, you register on the Ofcom website. Once you get your candidate number, you can enter that in applying for the license and um, the li the, your candidate number is issued from the RSGB. The RSGB do the examination, um, the, the, the whole process, uh, and then you log on to Ofcom to get your license. The output of your license, if you want to put it that way, is your call sign. Uh, it's Ofcom that issue you with a call sign uh, and your call sign is everything. You must transmit with your call sign at the beginning and at the end and wherever is practical, practicable, uh, you must use your call sign so that people can identify who it is uh, that's speaking uh, and they know that you are a, a licensed ham.
Uh, you need your call sign or the issuing of your call sign to register for things like DMR, digital IDs, etc. If you're going to use DMR radios, uh, and you will have to give your license schedule that you get issued uh, in order to get your digital ID. So when I applied for mine, uh, I noticed there was an option uh, on the uh, application uh, process online with uh, Ofcom, and it enabled you to uh, suggest your last three um, letters of your call sign. Uh, as I struggle to remember even my name these days, uh, I decided to use my initials and I was lucky enough to, to actually get it. So my, my call sign is uh, M7NLK, um, but because I'm in Jersey, um, or Channel Islands of Jersey, MJ7 NLK with my regional letter. So the, one of the last things I would say is to uh, encourage you to seek out and join a local club. Uh, they're everywhere. Um, you can find your local clubs on the RSGB's website. They'll tell you who to contact, where the clubs are, etc, etc. So um, that is something to definitely do. And I've got to hold my hands up and say that I haven't done that yet but I've only had my call sign for two days. So um, I, I will be making contact with people locally um, shortly and, uh, and I will seek out uh, the local club. So that's pretty much it from me. Uh, what's next on the channel? Um, we've got to get round to doing our GoPro 9 uh, plus media mod review. Uh, we've had this damn thing on the shelf for about three months. So we just haven't got round to doing the review. Uh, and now, unfortunately, the GoPro 10 has come out, um, so we've got to revisit the, uh, the, the the material that we were going to do for the GoPro Hero 9 uh, to, to update it for the Hero 10 as well. Um, we're doing a range test on the President Randy 3 CB radios. Uh, we have another handset coming down uh, and we will be doing some uh, line of sight range tests on those. So that will be interesting. Uh, and we also have uh, an Anytone AT, here we go, ATD878UV2 Plus radio, which we'll be unboxing uh, and, uh, and tinkering with. So please help the channel out uh, if you could subscribe that would be amazing uh, thank you very much uh, if you like this please thumbs up uh, always welcome comments in the uh, in the section below um, if you've got nothing nice to say don't bother saying it but you know i'd love to hear from you if you're a genuine person and you've got some genuine comments to make or a discussion to to be had i'd love to see it so thank you very much and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video